Okay, welcome back to the top-down tank battle game in Godot 3. This time around, we're going to add a couple of small, quick features. One, one about the tank and one visual effect. Stay tuned to the end because I do have a little bit of an announcement about the upcoming Godot 3.1 release, and I'd love to hear all of your opinions about it. But for now, let's dive into the code. So the first small feature I want to add is I want the driving to be a little faster when your tank is on the road. Or to put that the opposite way, it's slower when you're off-road. So that way when you drive along the roads, you'll be, you know, you'll be encouraged to drive along the road because you'll get there faster. So the way we're going to do that is by uh, checking what tile is underneath our position. If the tile that's underneath our position is one of these um, terrain tiles. Actually, I, I decided to do it this way because there's fewer terrain tiles than there are uh, road tiles because of all the curves and everything like that. So if we're on one of these non-road tiles, our speed is going to be lowered. Otherwise, we'll go our current higher speed. So we need a list of those tiles. So I'm going to go in my script tab here and I'm going to create a new script. And I'm going to call this globals. This is going to hold global variables, uh, of which we're probably going to need more later. This will just be the first. So we're going to make this script, and it's going to have in it a variable called slow terrain. And this is a list, which I've already made, of the tiles that are the terrain. So if we go back over to 2D here and we're in the tile map, you can see, right, number 0, not number 1, number 10, etc. Right, so I just made a list of the ones that are terrain. And like I said, there's a lot more road ones, so easier this way. So we're going to save that script and we're going to add it in the project settings as an auto load. So we want to go and pick that script, Globals, and we want to add it. And for the name, I'm going to put this in all caps, uh, mainly so that when I'm using it in scripts, it stands out. Um, it's just a visibility thing, personal preference. So, OK. So now what happens is that auto load will be automatically loaded in every scene. So whatever script you're using will have access via that global's name to whatever functions or data is in this script. So in our tank, I'm going to go over to our tank script now, and we're going to add a couple more configuration variables. We're going to add we're going to add a let's call it off-road friction. That's going to be how how much does being off-road slow you down, right? And that way we can make tanks have different values for that. And let's see, on the tank here, let's set the default for that to 1.5. So basically you'll be going 50% slower. Um, now in the script also what we need to do is we need a reference to the map so that we can access what tile is underneath us. Okay, and the main scene will will uh, set that value when the player spawns. So down here in our process function, or sorry, physics process function, right? If here, after we've checked the controls, if we have a map set. If that variable is set, then we need to figure out which tile is underneath us. So the tile that's underneath us will get the cell for our position using the world to map. So we convert our position into map coordinates and then get the cell that's there, which is going to be an integer value, the number. So if that tile is in globals.slowterrain, 
then we want to make our velocity and we're going to just going to divide it by off-road friction. Actually, come to think of it, why would I want to do it that way? Let's multiply it by off-road friction and let's just set the off-road friction to um, three quarters. All right, so, so you go three quarters speed when you are off-road. Okay, so now how do we set that map value? Well, that's going to be in our main, our map script here. In the map script, we're going to set that in uh, ready. So in ready, we're going to say set the player's map variable a equal to, and I want to set it to the ground tile map. All right, let's give this a try. Okay, so now I'm driving along, going kind of slowly, but when I get on the road, yeah, I'm, I'm faster. So you can see if I just go in a straight line, I speed up when I go across there. So now we can set that for different tanks to different values, and you'll be able to go a lot faster or a lot slower, um, whether you're on the road or not. Okay, so another small effect I want to make is I want an indicator when a tank's uh, damage is getting low that will show that it's almost dead, right? So that, or that it's damaged. So it has some smoke coming off. And so we, we're going to use a particle 2D node for that. So I'm going to make a new, actually, I'm going to make a new scene. And we're going to use a particles 2D. I'm going to call this smoke and I'm going to save it in the effects folder. So we can attach this to any of the tanks. We'll attach it to the to the root tank script or the root tank scene. Um, so what do we want this to do? So to get started, we don't have to get too fancy with this. We can really just use the default um, particle shapes and things and we can always come back and adjust it when we see what it looks like so let's see here I want more than eight particles let's try um, 50 and see if that's too many or not uh, lifetime we'll see how we feel about that one uh, what do we want explosiveness now we can keep that those are all fine uh, what else do we want to change on here? Um, position, I'll adjust that when we add it to the tank. Yeah, we'll see about that when these when we add it to the tank. But for process material, we want to add a new particles material, right? Which generates the default particles, which are little square ones just dropping off the screen. So we go into that particles material, and this is where we're going to set lots of these flags. So uh, let's see. Let's go through them one by one. So for the emission shape, I want to use a box because I want them to spawn, you know, in an area, not in one spot. So let's make the extents of the box wider. Okay, let's make gravity be zero because we don't want that. All right, so now they're spawning for, let's see, let's spread, spread. Probably want that to be a little bit smaller. And We'll mess around with the velocity and stuff. Let's get the appearance going. So for the scale, right, I want these to be larger. But then I also want there to be a scale curve, meaning when they spawn, well, maybe not. Let's just, let's see what it looks like with the color. I'm going sort of doing this as we go. So for the color, we're going to use a color ramp. 
which is a gradient from one color to another. So let's make a new gradient. Let's edit that. Now we want it to start out as kind of a maybe a grayish color. And then I want it to fade towards black, but also with a low alpha. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, now they're all spawning in the same spot and not moving. So we can also go to our velocity settings and give it a little bit of a uh, initial velocity because I think that is set very small. There we go. Although why is it going? I think we have our color ramp going the wrong way. I wanted this one to be the solid color and then this one over here to be the black low alpha there we go yeah let's make this one a little lighter okay and let's give it a little tangential acceleration that will make it sort of flow off to the side. If it's looking choppy to you, and this is from the screen capture, um, it'll be better once we get it um, all going. So there's that. So I'm going to save that. And then over in the tank script, we're going to attach this to the tank. So we're going to add an instance of the smoke. So let's take that smoke and let's flip it 180 degrees. I want it to be going off in that direction. And let's shift it back towards the back of the tank a little bit. Okay, save that. Let's look what that looks like on the player. There we go. So now a little bit of smoke looking is coming out of the back of the engine there. That's a good start. We'll come back and tweak it later. But now we want that to either turn on or off depending on the tank's health. So in the tank script, when it's ready, we're going to, let's see, in the health, yeah. So when it's ready, we're just going to turn it off. Right, we set the emitting to false because we don't want it to be showing. And then it turns on or off depending on your health. Right, So when you take damage, we want to turn it on. So so let's put that here. If health is less than max health, let's say if you're below half. Then I want to set emitting to true. And then when you heal, I want to do the opposite. All right, let's see what that looks like when we run this. Okay, so I haven't taken any damage. Let's go up here and get hit some. When my health gets low, oh, I'm smoking. Ah, do you notice what I forgot? So on the smoke, our problem is that we are stuck on local coordinates. So in the drawing, we want to turn off local coordinates. 
Local coordinates makes the particle stay attached to the emitter so that when the tank is turning, all the smoke turns with it. But we want it to trail off and not be attached to the tank anymore. Let's try that again. There we go. All right, so now I'm leaving off that trail of smoke. I probably am going to play around with this some more and, and fiddle around with the emission time, right? How long the particles last, maybe the speed they go at. Uh, but you get the idea, right? Particles, you can have a lot of fun just playing around with them and trying a bunch of different settings. So I'm going to tweak that um, off camera and we can move on to the next step. Um, so one other thing I want to do, oh, we should probably put that below the turret too, huh? Let's do that real quick. So we want the smoke to be rendering before the turret. All right. So bef one of the reasons that it's been uh, a little slower making these is because of the up coming release of Godot 3.1. And now that 3.1 is in beta, I've been spending some time taking a look at the features and I'm trying to decide whether I want to shift this project over to 3.1. Right? Once 3.1 comes out, people are going to want tutorials and examples and things that are targeted towards that. Now the good news is that the move from 3.0 to 3.1 isn't going to change a lot about this project. Um, the Obviously the older videos are going to look different because the UI has changed a little bit. The inspector looks a little bit different. So I think what I'm going to do is um, do an example video of that, of 3.1, and sort of get everybody's opinion on what they want me to do. If they want me to start working on shifting this over to 3.1, or if you want to stick to 3.0 for now, and deal with that later. Um, feel free to leave your comments in the comments below. And, you know, let me know what, what you think, what you want me to do about this um, upcoming new version of Godot. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And here I'm just tacking on at the end. If you want to see a different way to do the particles, I added a little red orange there to make it look like there's fire before the smoke comes out. Again, a lot of different ways you can do this. I encourage you to play around with the particle nodes yourself and uh, make something that you think looks good.